Yes, it's true. Interest rates, they are going up like a banshee. Um, everyone is worried. The sky is falling and most people are going to be screwed because they're going to pay higher and higher and higher rates. Most people don't know, however, that there are secrets where that doesn't have to be the case. And today, I'm going to share what some of those are. One. Turning dreams into reality. Yeah, it's one all one shot. Now the future is yours. Go. Secrets? You think that I keep secrets from you? I don't keep secrets from you. Check it out. If you're a subscriber on my channel, you know that I'm as free with information as possible. I'm going to share, however, information that most people don't understand about how you can make your rate lower. I'm going to tell you when it's smart to do. I'm going to show you when it's really dumb to do. And here's the bottom line. If you want to keep more of this stuff in your pocket, whether it's for investing and building a brighter financial future or just playing and screwing around and having more fun, you're going to want to watch today's video. Hey, don't screw around. You screw around too much. Straight from NerdWallet, look at what is happening to rates right now. They are rapidly increasing. In fact, everyone is predicting that quarter over quarter over quarter, this year of all of 2022, they're going to keep announcing higher and higher rate increases. So why are the feds doing this? Well, first of all, we've had really low rates for a long time. Real estate has been going up and they're trying to figure out how to get control of a control valve. Check this out. We saw rates on a 30 year fixed at 3.169%. Look at where we're at right now, 4.8%. That is more than a one and a half percent increase. And then of course in yellow, you've got your 15 year rates. If you say, well, I want to pay off my mortgage in 15 years, the bank says, wow, you must be so good with your money. You must be so responsible at managing it because you want to pay it off sooner and quicker and you're willing to make a bigger payment, you're probably an even safer bet. We'll let you have a 2.3% rate. Well, that now on a 15 year mortgage is just shy of 4%. So what does all this mean? Well, rates are only going to keep going up. Question is, what can you do about it? I've got two secrets for you today. The first secret is that you can buy points. Chris, what's a point? Well, in the banking world, a point is equivalent to a percent. 1%. And so right out of bank rate, they say discount points are extra fees that you can choose to pay to get a lower interest rate. Each point typically costs 1% of your loan amount and will lower your interest rate between 0.125 and 0.25%. However, the more points you pay, the less rate reduction you get for your money. In other words, there's a breaking point. There's a tipping point. At some point, it's going to make sense. And so you're like, wait a second, Chris. So you're telling me that if I increase my loan that was $250,000 by 1%, meaning tacking on another 2,500 bucks, that I can lower my rate somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of a percent? So you're like, well, I'll pay 2,500 more up front for the life of the loan, but if I can drop my payment by $50, $100, or a couple hundred dollars, that might be worthwhile to you. The second strategy is to use an ARM or an adjustable rate mortgage. An adjustable rate mortgage is a home loan with an interest rate that adjusts over time based on the market. Arms typically start with a lower interest rate than a fixed rate mortgage and borrowers can choose from either doing an arm over three years, five years, seven years, or even 10 years. Now, here's what that means. Let's just say that your 30 year fixed is 4.9% but you have a chance to get an arm and let's theoretically say that you can actually year one have an interest rate of just 3%, but maybe year two, it goes to three and a half and the next year, maybe it goes to four. Might take a few years before you catch up with what your rate would have been at the beginning. However, depending on what your game plan is, realize that that arm can keep adjusting higher and higher and higher eventually, even higher than what you could have originally locked in. In general, it means that you can enjoy a forced low interest rate for a few years, which will correlate to lower payments, but it means that maybe three, four, five, seven years down the road, you could wind up with a higher endpoint interest rate than if you had just gone with the fixed rate mortgage or that stable fixed rate right from day one. Pros and cons, pros and cons. Here's the pros of an arm. You're going to get a lower rate up front. Rates are locked in for three, five, seven, or 10 years, and you can refinance into a fixed rate later. Just remember that when you refinance, it usually costs five or seven or $9,000, right? 
Here's some of the disadvantages, however. You can actually experience some fluctuation, and when rates are just higher and higher and higher, you don't know where they're gonna end, so they can be hard to budget for. In other words, you're stepping into a huge unknown for maybe five or seven years down the road, and your monthly payment could dramatically increase. Now, imagine for a moment that I borrowed this amount of money on a property, and when I, if I had just locked in a rate today, maybe my payment is $2,000 a month. With an arm, maybe I can buy it down to like $1,600 a month. Now I'm saving $400 a month. But seven years later, what if it were to adjust to $2,400, maybe $400 higher? What you're basically looking at is, hey, if I'm gonna be in this house for less than five years, an arm might really actually make sense and save me some money. But if you're planning on being long-term into the deal, it's probably not the best idea, especially if you're semi-rate conscious which means that you have to have some kind of game plan depending on what your strategy is with the property that you're owning. Many people may be scared of an arm because there are a lot of unknowns. What will future rates be? How long will I own the home? Will the property cash flow? If you plan beforehand to sell the home after five years, a seven-year arm offers you the security that you need. So really, I think game plan comes down to how long are you gonna hold the property? If it was a primary residence and you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna live in here probably you know, 10, 20 years, then an arm may not be a good idea because what if rates over the next 20 years don't come back down low again? And what if your arm ended up putting you at the end of the day into a higher interest rate? Then you'd have to spend thousands of dollars to refinance into whatever the rate of the future is going to be, assuming it's a little bit lower. On the other hand, you know that I've done over a billion dollars worth of investment property. And I usually hold these homes for three, five, maybe seven years. An arm becomes hyper attractive. Why? Because I want the cash flow up front. I'm not trying to pay the thing off. How am I going to pay it off? When I sell it, in the meantime, I'm controlling the asset and I want to control the amount of cash flow that I get. And I can calculate what my arm will be over the next five years. And so for an investor, this product on a short hold might make a lot of sense. But there's a bigger game that we need to address. Are you an investor or are you a consumer? If you're a subscriber on my channel, there's a good chance that you are an investor or you're trying to become a more successful investor. And for that to happen, I need you to understand the difference between rate sensitivity and rate consciousness. These are two different terms. You see consumers that are not investors, they're very sensitive to rates. They're like, oh no, fear and panic, rates are going up, this is bad. My mortgage payment will go up. Do you think an investor thinks that way though? They're not rate sensitive, they are rate conscious. And what that means is they have to look at the rate and ask, what is the ROI gonna be on my investment? How much money will I make? And is that rate worth it? In other words, it's not a fear emotion-based response, it's more math. And the math is, how much money am I gonna make? In other words, Chris Crone, are you telling me that you've bought properties with 10% interest when right now they're at 5%? Well, sure. Why wouldn't you do a deal at 10% as long as you knew that it produced 50%? In other words, there's a game between what are you borrowing at and how much are you planning on making? And that game is called arbitrage. I'm an investor that makes millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars through the game of real estate. But really what it is, it's, it's not about single family. It's not about the strategy. It's about this weird word called arbitrage. And this is something that investors do with interest rates. If, for example, you were to pay a 6% interest rate, but then buy a property that produced a 26% annual ROI or return on investment, then your positive arbitrage is still 20%. And did you see what I did right there? I'm borrowing money at six, but I am earning 26. Borrow at six, earning 26, you're sandwiching the money in the middle. So 26 minus the cost of six, that's 20% left over. An investor who does their math won't be deterred by rate hikes, but a consumer will be. Now, what I'm telling you right now is that even if rates keep going up, they are still so cheap that an investor calls that pretty dang near free cheap money. You see what I just said right there? Pretty dang near free cheap money, which means, hey, I can borrow money at four, five, six, seven percent because I know how to put it out there earning 25, 30, 50, maybe even 100 percent, maybe even a thousand percent. In my world, thousands of percent, which is why you should be a subscriber on my channel because in my videos, I teach you how to do this kind of crap. 
Listen, I've shared my secrets with you. Now you know, you can either buy your rate down or you can choose a different type of loan product like an arm. But the real truth is that until you become an investor, you may never really own your financial future. See, in my world, I could show you all the things that I'm buying with money and you'd say, wow, is Chris like some like rich jerk that likes to flaunt his amazing lifestyle? When I started investing, I had nothing. And for the first five years, I didn't own a single luxury anything. I didn't own Lamborghinis, I didn't own expensive cars, I didn't live in mansions, I didn't travel around the world on yachts and private jets. The Chris Crone you see today is a byproduct of becoming an investor, someone that said, all right, I don't have money, so if I want it, I gotta find a way to save the little I got and I gotta figure out how to put it to work. Right now, if you've been putting money in a 401k, an IRA, if you own a home and it's gone up in value, you have equity, or maybe you just have good old hard earned cash saved under the mattress. And if that's you, that money should be put into high growth ROI investments. And I get it, you might say, but Chris, I don't know how to do that. And that would be a huge risk to try and figure it out. But guess what? That's my game. I have partners from all over the world. They put up the money, I put up a team of 200 experts, I go into the best markets, I buy the best deals, just like the last billion dollars in real estate, and I help turn them over time into mega multimillionaires. If you'd like to be the next one, at least considered for it, no promises, no guarantees, then I would click the link below where you can learn more about becoming my next partner. You know, today we've been talking about the secrets to getting lower rates, but you know what? You might also be interested in the secrets of why I love debt. In fact, there are five reasons why I go into debt intentionally, and it's not what you might think. Check out this video and let me show you why you should fall in love with debt. Uh, yeah, my name is, and um, I'm, that was kind of stupid. Um, one second. Yep, one second, let me find it.